gasoline on the fire. <laughs> you're, you're the master. <laughs> yes. Um, thank you, Monsignor, uh, again for a wonderful day and to everybody for a fantastic uh, discussion. Multilateralism is not under threat per se uh, in most of the world. It is under threat because of the United States. And I want to say this clearly because it's not a game and it's not to provoke, it's to discuss. Okay, the U.S. was the predominant economic and technological power of the world for decades. This is no longer the case. It is a powerful country economically and technologically, but it is no longer a dominant power. The European Union is a, a larger market. China is a comparable market. And the spread of technology is worldwide. The US is by far the most powerful military country in the world, though it learns war after war that the military can solve no political problems whatsoever. We have 6,000 nuclear warheads, 800 military bases around the world. We are involved in 14 shooting wars right now, have instigated multiple wars. The U.S. is a problem. It became a far more significant problem with Donald Trump. He may or may not be president after November. But the U.S. became vastly more complicated for the world since 2017. These are not polite things to say. Uh, nobody likes to say them, but I want to say them to explain a few things that I think are extremely important. The U.S. has blocked every multilateral initiative of recent years. It is the only country pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement. It is the only country that pulled out of the JCPOA agreement with Iran. There is not a China-U.S. trade war. There is a U.S. trade war on China. That is different. This was an unpremeditated attack because of China's rising technological capacity. Have no doubt about it. What is this about Huawei or about ZTE or about others? It is because the U.S. realizes that China is gaining massive technological capability in artificial intelligence and other security-related areas because China's talented, smart, minting hundreds of thousands of PhDs every year, and that's how the world works now. There's no monopoly of knowledge. There's no monopoly of talent. This is driving U.S. strategists crazy because U.S. grand strategy is based on primacy. And that's not some fantasy of mine. This is in our documents, our doctrines, one after another. There can be no U.S. primacy in the world anymore that is safe for the world. That's not how the world works anymore. But that is how U.S. policy works. The U.S. is attacking the digital taxation. It has taken tremendous, uh, disastrous cuts to corporate taxation, which is blowing up the worldwide taxation uh, on companies. It has dismembered the WTO. There is no appellate process now. It now uh, claims that it's going to adjudicate exchange rates and put unilateral tariffs on against countries that the U.S. alone deems to be manipulating the exchange rate. Well, I know our Treasury, and uh, with all respect, they don't have a clue about how foreign exchange markets work. This is, of course, pure <laughs> politics, top to bottom. It has nothing to do with anything meritorious other than the idea of temporary advantage in some geopolitical context, contest and context. Last uh, month when Iraq said it wanted the U.S. military forces out, if you can imagine the Treasury said, we will confiscate your foreign exchange reserves at the New York Fed if you persist in pushing our troops out. This is thuggery. 
This is a complete violation of every international rule. This is truly what we are facing. And I'm sorry to say it, it's my country, I'm not very happy to say it, but this is an imperial power in decline. And it is a dangerous country right now. It will be absolutely dangerous if Trump wins re-election. Now, okay, you don't have to say anything, no one likes to say these things, but this is actually important. The world can't stop because of the United States. We can't stop the Paris Climate Agreement, we can't stop having G20 meetings, we can't stop having tax reform, we can't stop having digital taxation, we can't have the United States adjudicate exchange rates, that's the job of the IMF. We can't not have an appellate system at WTO. We cannot have one country that is 4.2% of the world population and still 15% of world output, but not 50% of world output, decide on the international structure on which the other 96% depend for their lives now. Moreover, in the United States, Mr. Trump does not have a majority backing. So it is quirks of many things that give unilateral power to a small coterie of people to dismantle the international system right now. What I would just beg of you who are running the international system, have an open discussion. Don't be cowered by bullying. And let's proceed because there is not a global crisis about multilateralism. There is a US relentless daily pressure on multilateralism. This is quite different. I am traveling all around the world, month after month, meeting senior officials in every part of the world. There is no attack on multilateralism that I can discern anywhere. None. There is fear of the United States. This is different. Well, that's what bullies do. Bullies threaten you. You step a little bit ahead, you'll get pummeled. But if the whole world says, we continue our discussion, we continue the fight against climate change, you can do what you want. But we continue WTO, we continue climate change, we even have discussions at the fund and the bank, it's a little bit harder at the bank, but it's true. It's a whole board. Last time I checked, the United States, it's 16% of the vote, I believe, not 84, and there's another 84%. The General Assembly routinely votes 185 against the United States on almost everything right now. One after another, it's the US and two or three allied countries. And I know how that works because the ambassadors tell me about the threats that the US is putting on, direct, vulgar, threats, and I know about it one by one by one. So we are not in a crisis of multilateralism, and it's a bluff, like bullies bluff. The U.S. cannot blow up its own economy the way that they pretend they can, but if every country backs down one by one, then the bully gets the way. These issues are too important to be determined by Mr. Trump. It's not only Mr. Trump, because US unilateralism has been in vogue now for about 20 years. Actually, after 1992, the US went crazy, thinking it had, quote, won the world, and then it believed its own press release that it was the new Rome, and that it was the sole superpower, and that it was the indispensable nation. So this has been true since 1992. But it got a lot worse right now because the overt hostility against everybody, the threats against everybody, the lawlessness against everybody is completely unprecedented. And it's an abuse of our laws in the United States every day because Trump has none of this authority.
this is under national emergency legislation that he's taking these actions. How can he threaten France with a tariff on wine? Because France rightly says that there should be a digital tax. You think that's an American law? Of course not. This is lawlessness, complete lawlessness. So we had a good discussion today. There is really a big consensus on this world for a decent world. It's not unanimous, but let's not depend on unanimity. Let's move forward when a large part of the world wants to do the right thing. Thank you. Well, thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, you vote, we don't. So um, that's a little bit the problem, but, um, but thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, before turning the